Hi, I'm Melissa Muir. Welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. Today I'm going to show you a prototype for a new tool that uh, Pepe has developed for their superior ring bender. You've already been introduced to the steel mandrels and formers as well as the nylon formers. Well now they've also developed the nylon mandrels as well. So we'll talk a little bit about how those work and why maybe you would like them. This is right now just a prototype, so at the end of the video, just leave me your comments, either here on the video or on my blog, and we'll see if they feel like it's something that they should further develop. I've had the opportunity to play around with this for a little bit, but I wanted to show you first how everything lines up and how they compare. So here on the larger end, again, we've got the steel mandrel and the former that come with the tool, the superior ring bender, when you purchase it. The nylon dies are optional, but they are available. And you can see that I've played around with these a little bit. They're, they've got a little bit more wear, a little bit more dirt on them. Obviously, the nylon dies are not going to be as durable as the steel ones, but there's also benefits to that because you do have more movement and it also will not mar your metal or your wire or whatever it is that you're working with. So now this is what they have introduced here is the, um, the nylon mandrels to go along with their, their steel counterparts. So now you actually have the option of using totally steel or a steel with a nylon mix, you know, whether you go either way, or you could even use just complete nylon. Why would you want to though? Why would there be any need to use only nylon? And I, I gave that quite a bit of thought. So some people will say to me, well, Melissa, why do I even need this tool? I can just take my metal and hammer it onto a mandrel. However, that's not going to work with all metals. For instance, I have a pretty high relief uh, decorative piece of wire here. If I were to take my hammer to this on the mandrel, I'm going to lose all of that detail. It's going to distort, it's going to diminish it, and this is a perfect example of when I would want to use some of these nylon mandrels and formers versus some, one of the steel. Because again, even if I use the steel, it's going to crush the design on this. Now another piece that I've played around with earlier in this week was I just took and wrapped some wires together. There's actually a bundle of three wires in here and it's all wrapped with 30 gauge silver, uh, sterling silver wire. That's pretty thin and it crushes easily. Matter of fact, I actually broke a piece when I just bumped it with um, my pliers. This was a perfect example of how you would want to use the nylon so that you're not crushing and breaking this fine 30 gauge wire. And I'll show you a little bit about how I was playing with that in just a moment. So here I have the superior ring bender. It's attached in my vise. It's nice and secure. Not going to go anywhere. Again, all I need to do is just move this handle so that I can control the pressure that comes in on the mandrel and the, the formers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to get the rough shape of my ring. In this case, I'm going to select to use both the nylon pieces just to show you that there still is enough strength and movement that I don't need any of the steel. Here I've got my patterned piece of metal. And what I like to do is just start at the very beginning of my stock, my ring stock or my bracelet stock, whatever metal or wire you're going to be using. And I'm just pushing this through gently a little bit at a time so that each of my bends overlap and you can see that it's forming around the mandrel quite nicely. It's very simple, there's not a lot of pressure. Uh, I have not annealed this metal at this point. Okay, so it's too big to go completely closed around this and I need to close this up further so that I can get a good joint for soldering. So now I will just slip these pieces out move the next pieces in and repeat the same pattern and again each time just kind of overlapping each of those bends and it further refines and tightens this ring. Now again one of the things that I really like about this is that there is no distortion whatsoever of my pattern, my design. I'm not crushing it. Uh, nothing is happening in that term. 
Whereas if I had the steel, I run that risk greater. I like the fact that if I use both of the nylon mandrel and former, that there is some movement here that, again, I don't worry about um, changing the design, but I also still have that ability to give some really good force. Now here you can see that I'm off just a little bit. Take my fingers, just kind of move that back together, and then I can further re or refine this shape of my ring. And the purpose here is not necessarily to have a perfectly round ring at this point, but to get that joint closed enough that then I can come back and put this onto a ring mandrel, finish shaping and sizing it as well. So here at this point, I'm pretty close. I maybe just need to run my saw blade through that joint just to clean everything up, make sure I've got a nice good fit there, and then I would be able to solder this. So again, I'm kind of liking these uh, mandrels. It allows me to, um, again, work with more delicate items. So in the case of this, this is the wire that I was showing you a little earlier. Um, I'm coming in on the outer edge of this and creating kind of that arc with the three wires. This is actually very delicate work because one, I don't want to break that outer binding wire that I have, but I also don't want to crush the three layers either. So it, it works very well for me. Um, again, the steel on either one of these sides would very easily compress that 30 gauge wire there and compress it. And I don't have to be worried or concerned at all about that with this particular tool and with the nylon formers. So there's my thoughts. I've showed you now a couple of different things. Tell me your thoughts. Do you think that this would be something that if you have the superior ring bender, is it something that you think you might want or use? Like I said, leave me a comment in the videos or on my blog and I'll pass the information on to Peppy Tools. Thanks so much.